Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Wyoming. <laughs> we got to Wyoming last night, um, actually about supper time. And we had not planned on getting back until today, but we had a change of plans. And so we went a different way. And so we actually were back a, a day early. So, but I see that there are quite a few people in the chat already. The Vineyard Chicks are here. Um, Nisi is, he, oh, just a second, I didn't click the right one. The Vineyard Chicks are here. Nisi is here. Um, let me scroll down. Rebecca is here. She say, ha, says hi to everyone. Um, Vineyard Chicks asked how my dad was. He is doing so well. He had surgery last week. He's 91 years old. And it went perfect. The doctors were happy. The nurses were happy and we were so happy. So thank you so much for all of the well wishes and prayers and everything that you guys sent. So I just so appreciate it. And Shani is in here from Vancouver. She says, looks like you might need a sweater or two now. Well, it was 75 today, but that is the highest temperature all week. Um, next week we're in the 50s, 60s all the time. Though Friday, it does say that we have a chance of snow in the morning. So I am going to be planting brassicas this week, this week, but I won't plant my tomatoes until the closer to the end of the month because so many times the very end of the month, we just get dumped on. I think three years ago, very end of the month, 11 inches of snow. And look who else is here. And I hope you are feeling so much better today. And I was sorry to hear that you hadn't been feeling good, that you were in the hospital. So I am, I know you have your live tomorrow. So you said that you were feeling better. So I just, I'm glad that you're feeling better. And Angie is in. I got to see Angie on Saturday night when on our way home. And so that was great. She let us stay at their house and it was fast. We got there late, like, I don't know, like nine o'clock at night, talked to him for a little while, had a cup of hot tea and we left early in the morning, but it was great for, to see her and I kind of see all of her plants. And so I'm actually going to do a fun little video with all of her plants in her house. It is just amazing. And everybody is saying hi to everybody. And Anne says, thank you, Sandy. I am better. Awesome. And Molly is here. That's right, Molly. On Friday morning, it's supposed to snow. We just got back to Wyoming ye yesterday, Molly. We had been in Arizona, and now we are back. And I have to tell you, it is so green here. Because remember I, I said weeks ago, I asked everybody, oh, pray for Wyoming, because my water is not turned on. <laughs> and we were coming back way later than nor normal. And I was so afraid that, uh, you know. I'd come back and there hadn't been any water on any of my plants, but they actually got three inches of rain in two weeks and everything is spectacularly green. And so <laughs> I'm just so excited. And Jake is here. Good evening, young man. How are you? Um, Molly, my parents are good. Dad had his surgery. Everything went well. And thank you for asking. And in fact, I just talked to my mom just a little bit ago. She just um, called to just say hi. I think she was missing me already. Because, <laughs> I mean, we were there. I saw her every single day, multiple times a day, most of the time. And so that was so sweet of her to call. And I said, I miss you. <laughs> and my dad is 91 and my mom is 84. And so it's, um, you know, it's always good to, if you can have time with your parents, do it. That's what I say. And everybody's saying, hi, um, no mo may, still possible. That's right. Uh, because I don't let Joe mow in our yard in May, ever. There's a pollinator group that's a national group, and they ask you not to mow your wand in May. What it does, even if you don't have dandelions, what it does is the grass will actually make little seed heads that... Um, insects will go to. And you might have dandelions, you might have clover, that if you cut it down, they don't have that food source. And in May is the hardest time for bees to have a food source in a lot of parts of the country. Other parts, 
it doesn't matter. But in a lot of parts, yes. And, oh, look who's here. The Jackson man. One of my grandsons. <laughs> we are back in Wyoming, Jackson. We got back yesterday. And I saw your mom the night before. So there. Oh, look at here. 12 Stones Ranch. That's the nice part about spring is having all the green foliage and the flowers blooming. Oh, I so agree with you. 12 Stones, I don't think you have been in one of my lives before. So welcome. And I need a pen because I will go over and look at your channel. Because I always want to subscribe to people that come over into my live. So I got you down there. Thank you. And Andrew's saying hi to Jackson. That's so fun. <laughs> now, I am going to show you just, I just took a few little video clips around my yard today. Because, like, we got the internet on today. The water got turned on at 2 o'clock. We were unboxing everything we brought back in the truck. It was a busy day. And so I just kind of threw this together. But I'm going to show it to you. And... Oh, wait, wait, let's stop. Stop it. Stop it. One second. I got to go back. I got to take that background off. Otherwise, it's very distracting. Let's just hide that. So we're going to go back to black. Now let's start again. <laughs> These are the tulips. The tulips are everywhere in my yard. A couple years ago, I, I got bags and bags of tulips. And I just planted them everywhere. Any place I felt like it. And the rhubarb is up. There's some daffodils. Actually, I have daffodils in about seven different places. Um, sedums, that's autumn sedum. And you can see when we left, the plants were growing. These two, um, daffodils are almost done, but they're beautiful. I just love them. And um, this is one of our hills in our yard. And see, there's just tulips everywhere. And in fact, there's a whole bunch of them that having, they have the flower, but they're not open yet. And so for a couple of weeks, all these beautiful tulips all over my yard. I can have to green everything. This is a pear tree. And the bees are just buzzing all over the place. <laughs> I'm just so excited. But the pieces haven't leafed out. Some of the apples have leaves, but they haven't leafed out. But these ones up on the hill, the top of the hill, they're about to open. So they're farther along. That is, this is a different pear that's down in the garden. And the bees are everywhere. And this is a wild plum. My other plum is really starting. But this is more like a shrub. And they make these tiny purple ones. So delicious. And strawberries. Garlic coming up. And both of my beehives were good. That was another concern because I wasn't there in the wintertime. It had been cold. It had been hot. And it's really hard on the bees. But... I have top entrances, and so where other these are hives are a little bit different, they come into the bottom. Mine come in from the top, and so I slow down the bees so that you could see them. And they were just going in and out, getting pollen from who knows what flowers. And the other beehive was just as busy, and lots of big mushrooms where I have dead stumps and logs in my wild garden. Um, huge mushrooms. The bleeding hearts are up. This is a black currant bush. And it is just like loaded with flowers. Now it's no mow May. And so I won't let them weed eat. I won't let them mow. So on the stairs, there's dandelions. And up along the top, there's dandelions. Um, in the front, I don't really have dandelions. And that's just some of my stuff just starting. And so that is a quick look at my garden right right now. And um, it was fun. The beds, like the asparagus is coming up, um, rhubarb's up, the chives. Um, oh, just, just all kinds of things that are perennial vegetables are up. And so that has been really fun. And, ah, oh, Stella's here. Hi, Stella. How are ya? Um, garlic is probably my favorite thing on earth. I love garlic. I can't even tell you how much I love garlic. It is just 
Amazing. Oh, and Leanne is here too. So fun. Leanne, I hope you're doing good. Um, now, Ann Dale is in here. And you see that little S thing after her channel name. And that means she is a member. It costs 99 cents to become a member. You just click the join button that are below videos. And so that's always kind of fun. And um, thank you everyone for the chat. Nisi must be leaving us. Um, it, it has been great fun being home. In my raised beds, I am going to um, start my brassicas. And I'm actually going to, on my north side of my house, which would be over there, actually. Um, I have these two humongous plastic, well, I wouldn't really call them a tub because they're way bigger than a tub. They're about, oh my gosh, Jackson, you are so sweet. <laughs> Thanks, Jackson. <laughs> I love it when my grandkids become my members too. <laughs> oh, and Teresa is here too. Hi, Teresa. How are you? The, anyway, they're, they're about four feet by four feet. And they're these weird plastic things. Some friend of Joe gave them to us a long time ago. And I actually can't even remember who had given it to us. But, okay, so they're about four feet by four feet. And they, they go up like this and they come down. And I've grown strawberries. I've grown different things in them. But I'm going to actually grow some brassicas in there because they get a lot of shade. I mean, they get sun, but I think they should be a perfect place for brassicas, which are cabbages, broccolis, cauliflowers, kohlrabis, um, kale, things like that. Those are brassicas. And so I'm just totally stoked about putting them over there. So I'm actually going to the nursery tomorrow because we got back so late. So I can't hardly start them from seed if I want some harvest. <laughs> so I'm just going to go over to the nursery. Um, we have three great nurseries in town and um, I'm friends with all three owners. <laughs> so it's just fabulous. And so, oh, Jennifer is here. Jennifer, how are ya? <laughs> so those are going to go in there. Now, Friday morning, we were supposed to get snow. I knew I wouldn't get home and not have snow. <laughs> I mean, we're way later than we did last year, and I'm still getting snow. But it's only supposed to be a little bit. Then it's supposed to warm up to 50 degrees, so it should all melt. Oh, Nisi's going to little man's fourth grade music recital tonight. Oh, they did so great. That is fabulous. Are you going to show any video of that? I love little kids' programs. They are just like so fun. And Teresa says that she is doing good. That is so amazing. Now, I put to get, put all my boxes in my little studio, which is an oversized shed. It's a wooden shed that actually some, I think they were heterites in Montana made them. And then it came down here and they just, they were good. They had the little support things and it just slid right on there. And it's perfect. It, I mean, it was so even and they didn't have to adjust every, anything. It was perfect. So anyway, that's my art studio. And um, we had all these boxes that I brought back because I have to bring glass and my kiln back and forth because, because otherwise I'd have to have everything in two places. And I can't afford that. Oh. <laughs> um, Leanne says to plant peas quickly. They do better in the snow. Um, yeah, I have I have packages peas. So those all those things I will plant. I will. And Southern Roots is here. Hello, young lady. How are you? And Heather is in here too. My daughter had her middle school concert tomorrow night. Oh, so fun. I love that. Um, Stella, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Thank you. 
And um, so I'm putting all my stuff away that I brought back, you know, and I think I have everything that I'm supposed to have. And I get to the end and I don't have my box of glass paint. I may have this one kind of paint, but it's not the kind I like, my, not my col glass, my color line. I must have left it in a box in my art studio. So it was like, nice. <laughs> so I either have to buy some more or do go without it. And I don't know what to do yet. And Brenda's here. Hi, Brenda. How are you? Redbird Farm. Awesome. So many good friends in here tonight. And Nisi is also a member. So you see that she has that little S thing after. Her. So Anne and Nisi are in here that are members. And Jackson now, who is a member. So that is awesome. <laughs> and Nisi says, I say go shopping. <laughs> well, I have to order them online from a glass company. It's not just regular glass paint. Which I think I probably, probably will. Because it is just so, not the other, not that the other one doesn't work, but it doesn't fire glossy and it's not as easy to work with as the other. And so that's craziness. Um, are you going to get those garden gnome overalls? <laughs> Angie <laughs> sent me this picture and they're so they're overalls, right? And they have little gnomes all over them. But no, Angie, I'm not going to get them because they're spendy but they are, they made me happy. I love them. My husband and I planted 60 tomato plants yesterday night before the thunderstorm. Ooh, 60 tomatoes. That is awesome. Um, Leanne, are they more slicers or ones that you're going to do your sauces and your spaghetti sauce and salsas and stuff like that? And Kettle Kitchen is in. Hello. How are you? Thank you so much for stopping by. That's so sweet of you. Now, this summer, I have some projects to do. In my front garden. Um, so we have the deck and the grapevines that grow up on the deck. And then there's a section that's probably about six feet, eight feet before it starts to slope down the hill where there's flowers. Well, always it is you know, it doesn't matter what I plant in there. Um, I've had irises and daylilies and herbs in there like um, oh, yarrow and wormwood and just all kinds of stuff. And I do have a couple honeyberry bushes right in there that I will, I'll have to dig up and move someplace else. But it has been a real grasp and thistle problem right there. So I am just like continuously, continuously. So I've decided I'm digging everything up and I'm going to put a little pond there. I have the plastic the, you know, the really thick pond liner plastic. I have a roll of it. I haven't used it. And I thought I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to put rocks in it. I'm going to put some tadpoles in there. I think it should be fun and interesting. The only concern I have is in the front yard, the front of the yard, of course, is not fenced. And we have antelope and we have deer. And they might find it very nice to drink out of it. But it's close enough that I can have the pump in there to circulate the water. And there's an outlet at the deck. And so it would work pretty good there. So that's my one of my plans for this summer. And um, I think... But, oh, Leanne is doing mostly Romas, but I have eight pungent purples. Hoo, hoo, hoo. I bet you those are good. When you get your purples, would you send me some seeds when they, would you send me a few seeds? I would appreciate that. I'm always looking for good tomatoes. <laughs> um, and I have lots of good Romas. You know, I have striped romas, I have regular romas, I have really big romas, but purple tomatoes, I really like. <laughs> and Nightbot is going to pop open all of my members, and so they're going to have links on there. So um, I always appreciate that. And, oh, sorry, it got over 90 degrees 
Oh, that's hot. We worked our garden projects until the heat did us in. I talked to my mom yesterday. It was 107 in Yuma. Today, I think it was 105. So mom and dad said that they did some stuff in the morning, but they basically stayed inside <laughs> the rest of the day. Um, we got to, Brenda, we got to Wyoming last night about 4, 430. And we changed our route from what we were going to do. We weren't going to be back until today in the afternoon. But we had some things that one of our sons that we were going to see wasn't feeling well. And he didn't think we should stop by. So then we switched around and we just did a different route. But then I did get to spend the night at Angie's house and we got to see her. So that was fun. And everybody is saying hi to everybody. Um, mine almost got to two pounds at the start of the summer. We must be talking tomatoes. That is awesome. I love tomatoes. Usually I grow about 40 different types of tomatoes. Now this year I did start some tomatoes. I rooted tomatoes that I was growing in Arizona and I brought them with me. And so I'm gonna plant those, but not until after Friday. And actually, I probably won't plant the tomatoes until closer to the end of the month, just because we could have other snow. And I do have um, my little domes that I got at the Dollar Tree store. I brought those from Arizona. And so I could actually put those over, but I think I'm going to put those over on to some other plants and just wait on the peppers and the tomatoes. By Leanne, her husband got home, so she's got to go. I appreciate you um, stopping in. Thank you so much. Now, sometimes I do private art classes. And so sometimes I will actually, um, you know, I'll actually just, you know, they'll say, I found this picture online. Can you teach me how to paint it? You know, we're not selling the painting. All we're going to do is, they want to know the technique of how to do that painting. And so I want to show you a couple of them that we did with a friend of mine. And she's already um, said, are you back in Wyoming yet? I need to do some more art classes. <laughs> so this is one of them. Let's see. Can you see that? This is a teapot and a cup and a little tea bag. But she found it someplace and she loved it. And she goes, can you teach me how to paint that? So I said, okay. So I just looked at the painting and figured out what the artist was doing. And so that was just um, fun. Okay, this is the other one that she wanted to do. I love it. Now, are the colors the same as the original one? Not exactly, no. And we changed things up. But um, this was my, my version. So when she has me do stuff, I draw it all out for her. And... Then we just start um, painting. And, you know, when you've painted a lot, it will make it so you kind of understand how they did the background, how they're blending colors. And so I thought I would do a couple of paintings on the channel, too. And um, what is this cucamelon I keep talking? I keep hearing about. Are you talking about those little tiny things that look like watermelons, but they're like a cucumber that you pop in your mouth? Is that what, you, what you're talking about, Tony? Let me know about that. Um, um, Truth, my dad is doing so good. Thank you. Ah, look who's here. Nick. AZ Highland Homestead. Hello, hello. Um, Jennifer says, I love doing paint night. Me too. It's totally fun. Now, we, I think on each of those paintings, I probably was over at to our house two hours a time, probably three or four times before we got those paintings done. But there are a lot of paintings that I can do in just a little bit of time. And so I'll do something that takes me an hour or so. And sometimes I've done it live, but sometimes it's easier for me to, because, you know, you're just painting and sometimes that's boring to put the, the painting together. Um, anyway, they grow on a vine, those 
cuca melons, whatever they're called. Um, and the, the way they're patterned, you know, they're shaped like a watermelon, but you just pop the whole thing in your mouth and you eat them. Um, I know that people pickle them. They do a lot of different fun things with them, but most people just paint, uh, just pop them in their mouth and eat them. And I think that's fun, you know, to do stuff like that. I, my, my biggest predicament now that we live in two places is that what to grow and what not to grow. Because like I usually would grow two or three, four different kinds of pumpkins and then squashes because we would eat them through the winter. Well, now I, I leave. And so I can't, certainly can't pile a bunch of pumpkins into my truck. And so I'm trying to find some more shorter day pumpkins and squashes, you know, because we, we would just end up giving everything away, which we probably give 75% of our vegetables away anyway, which is totally okay because we like that. Um, so, but if you guys know any types of squashes, pumpkins, watermelons that are really short days that you've grown, so you know you really like them, um, it would, it would be helpful. And then it's like, I'm planting my potatoes tomorrow. Now, I always chip my potatoes, which means that you put them in light sometimes for a couple months. Sometimes people only do it for three or four weeks because it makes those eyes that come out of the potatoes really, they swell and they stay really short. Unlike if you had potatoes sitting in your, your cupboard or your lazy and they decide to grow and they have these crazy eyes that are growing all over the place. That's not the way. That's not the idea of chitting. When you chit your potatoes, the eyes stay really short. What it does is it will, they'll start to grow faster when they're planted. And you'll actually have stronger plants by doing that. And I never cut them. I plant the whole thing. Well, just I do, just do the trench and I just plant each one. You know, I don't cut them at all. Well, living in two places, I don't really have time. And so <laughs> I um, chitted them in Arizona, put them in a box, a literally a box um, with dirt. And I'm going to plant them tomorrow. So it's crazy. Um, question, why don't you can pumpkins? They say, you'll, you'll say, I don't can. Um, I do can, but... Um, Pumpkin is better if you freeze it. Um, when you try to can pumpkin at your house, sometimes the heat in the center of that jar does not get hot enough and it can be unsafe. Um, you're better off doing chunks of pumpkin and canning it than you are a pure pureed pumpkin. It's... Um, it's just not really safe. And so um, they don't recommend it at all to can regular pumpkin. Chunks of pumpkin, yes, but not pureed. And so I've just always froze it or I've dehydrated it, things like that, um, which I could do also, you know, and I think I missed Anne coming in. Hi, Anne. How are you? Your husband is in here someplace. Because <laughs> I already said hi to Jake. <laughs> and everybody is saying hi. I hope I didn't miss anybody. You might ask Casey at Boots and Bounty. Okay. Um, are we still talking about pumpkin? Um, but, um, I, and I know that, um, I mean, I can a lot. But everything I have always read, it says that, we shouldn't can pumpkin or squash when it's pureed. And so um, I guess it's a personal choice. Would it be safe? Probably 95% of the time. 
but I would, I, I just don't do it. I freeze it all the time. Like I have pumpkin in my freezer right now. In fact, when I, we got home, I was checked to make sure the freezers, you know, all of them were all good. And there was all this rhubarb and there's all this pumpkin. And I thought, ah, I have to bake this week. <laughs> so I'm going to. <laughs> um, I think some of the fancy pum pumpkins are short day, but I don't know how good they are for cooking. Um, I have grown several of the French pumpkins that have the warts on them and what they call Cinderella pumpkins. They're always so fabulous. Um, what are, what a good garden plants for warmer regions like Texas. Now, um, 12 stones ranch. Um, Anne is in here from little Frenchie in big Texas and her husband, Jake is in here and they have huge gardens and they live in Texas and they would really be the ones to go back and forth to you. Um, when, when we live in Arizona for part of the year, um, I grow anything that I grow in the North. Um, some things work better than other things. Uh, I did find that okra, it was, I think was too, not enough humidity for okra. I mean, it grew at first and then it just kind of sat there. It didn't really do anything where it had enough heat, but I think it was just not enough humidity. And so things like that can, um, affect your plants. Also, my garden spot there is very new. And so maybe it just didn't have enough oomph in there, you know, that I need to add a few more things. But, um, and if you're still in, um, 12 Stones is asking that question, or Jake, if you're still in. So, Teresa says, hi, everyone. Sorry I came in late. Sandy, glad to see you and Joe made it safely. We are so happy to be home. Um, and I did a members video this morning and I'm sure I missed lots of these comments and on this side, I'm sorry. Um, we, you know, cause the internet finally came on. So I had already done the video and I was just waiting for the internet to come on and I did a members video and I was telling them that, you know, when we live in Arizona, we live in a really tiny place and it's very minimalistic. There's not a lot of stuff um, other than my art room has quite a bit of stuff because I bring my glass and, uh, you know, I bring pastels and all kinds of stuff, paints down there. So um, it was so funny. I got back here. We have so much stuff, you know, and it was like, whoa, <laughs> but it's just, it's, it's okay, you know? Um, Anne says, I love the members video. She's so sweet. I am starting a garden this year, four, four by eight raised beds, and I am zone six B. Any rec recommendations for things to grow for a new gardener? Well, I always say grow what you guys love, you know, um, will you have things that aren't as successful? Everybody, every gardener has things that specific year are not successful. But um, 6B, you should be able to grow anything you can imagine. Um, what I do on my raised beds is I have PVC pipe that curves over top of it. So early spring, like tomorrow when I plant, at night, I'll pull the plastic over top. And I do that at night when it, it gets down, because most of the time it'll be... 40s or high 30s right now for the rest of the month. That's cold for a plant. You know, they're used to a greenhouse and that is cold for them. And I think, um, the well, the other thing we use the hoops for is that in the summertime, we have screening over top of it. I bought this great big roll on Amazon. It was like 100 feet long. It's black screen like you would put in windows only it's more heavy duty than what you would buy like at Home Depot. And I have had it hail and hail on it. And once in a while, we have some little dots that it kind of broke through, but the hail has never come through. So that's something. Plus, 
it's nice if it gets too hot in your zone, um, that screening can kind of filter the light through. And so that's kind of good for it. Um, Anne is asking what part of Texas that you guys are on so that you guys should talk back and forth because you're both from Texas. Um, Cause and they're in East Texas and yeah, they have a fabulous greenhouse. Um, last year was our first year and not everything grew well. That just happens. And it also ha always happens when you have raised beds. You know, when you're, you're filling your raised beds, you can buy, I mean, maybe you're moving just soil. Maybe you're, um, you're buying what they call raised bed soil. Maybe you're doing a combination of potting soils and garden soils, and you're just mixing everything together. Raised beds has to go through this process. And sometimes it takes a couple years of you adding things in each year before it becomes this great, wonderful soil that anything you put in there will grow. And like Anna is saying that um, she was disappointed in the squash, for instance. Um, sometimes it just happens. Every gardener will find that. You know, you've grown the same kind of tomato year after year. Um, and then one year, the weather's different. The temperatures are different. Um, not as much rain or more rain. And it doesn't grow as good. It just happens. Um, I would love to see a calendar of when to plant vegetables in Casper and Gillette. Ah, well, um, if you are in Gillette, um, stop by the extension office, which is in the old George, the George Amos building downtown. And they have what they call, it's this planter thing and it works for Casper too. And you just slide it and it'll tell you exactly what date to do everything. But for me, all the brassicas I'm planting this week. So cabbages, broccolis, um, kale, kohlrabis, cauliflower, all that stuff I'm planting. I'm planting my potatoes. But my potatoes, I do have a cover so that on Friday when it snows, I can have that covered the night before and it will stay warmer. Um, because mine, I have been growing my potatoes in this box and they're just starting to come through and I can't have those leaves get cold or they'll, they'll be yucky. Um, I won't plant my, like the potatoes you can plant, your onions you can plant. Garlic I usually plant in the fall, but if you haven't planted your garlic, plant it now. Um, I probably wouldn't harvest it this this year. I would just let it sit in the ground till next year and the cloves will be much bigger. If you have bought soft neck garlic versus hard neck garlic, you can still harvest it this summer. Um, I won't plant like my artichokes, um, my tomatoes, my peppers until the end of May, just because we could have snow. In fact, Friday we're having snow. And so Casper's probably having snow too. Um, but the brassicas, the, any of those cold weather, you could plant your carrot seeds, your radish seeds, um, your pea seeds, um, certain beans you could um, plant this week. There's a lot of things. Don't plant your cucumbers yet because we're having snow. So it's um, there's a lot of really good resources, both in Casper and Gillette. Um, the master gardeners are in the extension office at Georgia Amos Building in Gillette. Um, at Natrona, Natrona County, there's an extension office and they do stuff out at the fairgrounds too. So you could probably catch them either place there. So I hope that answers. And Grace and Fire, Glenda, how are ya? <laughs> so, but that being said, with waiting, have I always waited on those tomatoes? No, because I have walls of water. Um, I have hoops that I can make into many greenhouses, but like I tell people all the time, you know, cause I've done all those walls of water, all the different things. And then I've planted other ones at the same time. And eventually by the end of June, they're all caught up anyway. Cause some people they'll tell me, oh, I can't, I just can't, um, 
Plant tomatoes, now I'm late. They'll catch up. It's amazing the growth that your vegetables will have in June because the soil temperature is really what stimulates those vegetables to grow so much. So even if you're late, your vegetables will catch up. It'll be fine. I always say it's not rocket science. It's only vegetables. Some things are good. Some things will be bad that year. But it's always fun. It's always a learning process. Um, is it true that plants that produce its fruit above the ground should be planted when going into the light of the moon? And same for the, gra the ground fruit in the dark of the moon. You know, my grandmother always planted by the moon. Do I think it makes any difference? Honestly, I don't. But there are plenty of gardeners that always do that. And my grandmother was one of them. She, she, her, she looked at her almanac and that's how she planted. And she always had beautiful gardens. I don't know. <laughs> Glenda says, I'm well. I literally have been running all day. And now I'm taking a quick moment to say hello before I go to bed, head to bed. That's so sweet of you, Glenda. Thank you. But everybody, I'm going to let you go. I'm past my time. I usually like my lives one half hour. If you have not clicked the like button, please do that. Um, oh, temperature of the ground. Okay. One of the things to remember in, when you're doing your garden, because we don't like weeds in our garden. So, so many times we want to plant our plant and mulch. But you always have to remember you can't mulch before your ground temperature is basically above 70, 75 degrees. Um, if you mulch before that, then your plants will always be stunted. They'll never produce like they should produce. And <clears throat> excuse me, I know it's a little bit, <coughs> sorry, I'm going to have to take a drink. I know it's always a little bit weird when you're, because um, you think that, you know, you put your finger in the soil, it feels warm, but is it warm four or five inches down? And you can get a temperature probe at Walmart, Home Depot, any of those places that have garden centers. It'll cost you about five or six dollars. And you just put it in there, it tells, tells you the soil temperature of the ground. If the soil temperature of the ground is not above 70, 75 degrees, do not put mulch around your vegetables. Because in the long run, it will always hurt your vegetables and you will not get the amount of yield that you would otherwise. And a lot of times, like watermelons, um, things that really are sensitive to the ground, you're better off waiting before you put those in the ground just because the soil temperature, temperature is cold and those plants do not like them. And look here. Hi, Jason. How are you? <laughs> Jason popped in. And um, um, yes, but we really have the greenhouse for our citrus and other fruit trees. Oh, so 12 Stones is asking you questions. Um, they have a beautiful greenhouse and it's big. And um, for you guys that are different parts of the country, look at your Department of Egg because almost every state now has money for greenhouses for gardeners. You, you know, you have a lot of paperwork to fill out and you have to do reporting. Well, in Wyoming, anyway, you have to report for about three years on how the greenhouse did. They have, you know, standard things that they want to know how much it produced, that it produced, things like that. Um, but depending on the grant that year, Sometimes it'll pay for the entire greenhouse. I mean, big greenhouses, you know, like 30 by 70 feet long, that kind of greenhouse. Um, sometimes they'll pay par for part of it. But it is a great way if you are a gardener, maybe you want to expand your garden, you want to do some farmer's markets, or you just want to sell to people, you know, not at a market. Looking at the Department of Ag, look for their grants. Um, look to see if they have a greenhouse grant. And almost all states now have what they call specialty grants. And these are specialty crop grants. So if you wanted to try growing a, a specialty crop in, you know, and it, it doesn't have to be in a greenhouse. It can be in regular ground. Um, 
and they will pay for part of that. And it's a great way to experiment on adding a certain vegetable that you may want to sell, you know, grow at a larger scale so that you could sell them at like a farmer's market. Or maybe you have a market stand at your property, you know, at the roadside. Look into that because those grants are there for a reason and they just sit there if nobody uses them. And so why not use them? So, but everybody, I'm going to let you go. It is 45 minutes in and I have a live stream on my Fuse Glass artwork Wednesday morning. And then for the first time on Friday night, it is late night with Nana because everybody calls me Nana. And um, people are always saying, I wish you were my Nana. I wish I lived next door. And I thought, I'm going to do a little late night talk show. And so if you have a question, because sometimes people don't have their moms anymore, they don't have their grandmas, but they sometimes just want to talk. And so late night with Nana is going to be on Friday nights and it's late. <laughs> and so check that out. But it is on um, my suburban home center, Wyoming, Arizona channel. So everybody have a great night and I will see you next time. Bye, everybody.